Uh, Ephesians 3, 2, start there. The dispensation of the grace of God given me that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. I'm looking at the underlined words. The mystery which in other ages was not made known as it is now revealed. You see it? Just goes right together, doesn't it? Uh, and our responsibility, Paul tells us in Ephesians 3, 9, there at the top of your page, to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God. Now it's our responsibility to do our best to try to reveal this great truth, the accomplishment of the cross that gives us the gospel like no other time. The gospel of grace. And then 1 Corinthians 10, or 15, or 1, look at verse 16. Look at verse 16. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him. Paul is the first. He is the pattern. Nobody better than Paul to be that example for us. L, I'm going to hurry up through this. The two gospels and signs and wonders. One, the kingdom gospel. A, Israel was known as the sign people, beginning with the plagues and Moses. He said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. In the gospels, Christ did many miraculous healings, confirming, confirming to the Jews he indeed was the Christ Messiah. Notice C, during, during early Acts, the 12 did even more miracles than Christ had done. But after Acts 7, it was clear that their miracles would not convince Israel's leaders to believe that Jesus or that Christ was the Messiah. Now that's important. They're performing these miracles, they're healing, they're raising the dead, they're doing lots of miraculous things, speaking languages, they're healing and all these things, and yet the nation still would not believe. Even Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1, for the Jews require a sign. See that? But then there's the grace gospel. When God saved Paul in Acts 9, he was given... Miraculous gifts. This was for the Jews and the Gentiles to believe in Paul's apostolic authority because he was not part of the 12. And by the way, let me just say something. Because Paul was not one of the 12, his apostleship was always questioned. Hey, they walked with Jesus. You didn't walk with him. No, I didn't walk with him, but you know something? He came down from heaven and he told me something. <laughs> so how do we know in the name of Jesus rise up and walk and the Bible says he did those things that by all means he might win all men but he did though he said to the Jews I became a Jew that I might win them so God works through Paul the last half of Acts this is a big reason that Peter and the 12 gave Paul their approval as an independent apostle with his new gospel of grace message. You can read that other verse shows when it happened. B, until God progressively revealed all of the mystery program to Paul, and that ended over in 2 Timothy and so on, from the beginning of his ministry through the transition in Acts, from the Jewish kingdom program to the mystery gospel of grace program, Paul had temporary gifts. That word temporary is really important. Remember, in Acts, Paul went first to the Jewish synagogues to prove his authority because the Jews required a sign. God, through Paul, performed miracles and wonders 
to confirm his message. Through the book of Acts, Paul goes to the Jew first. Jews require a sign. So Paul had the ability to perform certain gifts. He had certain gifts to perform miraculous things. But after Acts 28, he doesn't go to the Jew first any longer. And as a result, the miraculous fades away. I'll show you here. Acts 5, 15, 12. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders. That's the only way the Jews would believe, by the way. God had wrought among the Gentiles by them, Paul and them. But after Acts comes to an end, the transition from Israel to the body church had taken place. Paul no longer performed signs and wonders. As a matter of fact, Paul left companions behind because they were sick. Why didn't he heal them? Uh, Timothy was sickly. And Paul's thorn. How many times did Paul pray for that thorn to be removed? Three times. And God says, no, my grace is sufficient, Paul. Paul says this in Galatians 4, Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh... I preach the gospel unto you. 2 Corinthians 11, If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Wait a minute. If he's, if he's you know, has that miraculous power, why didn't he use it? He can't. That's over with. Today, since God is not dealing with the sign people Israel... Since the kingdom message had to be temporarily set aside, and since we have a complete Bible, there is no need for signs and wonders to confirm authority. Today, we don't need those to confirm authority. We say, here's my authority. I have the word of God. Huh? How do I know you're from God? Right here it says Huh? <laughs> M, the two gospels and water baptism. The kingdom gospel, very simply, the religious rite of water baptism was part of Israel's cleansing rituals. As circumcision, tongues, and healing went off the scene with Israel's being set aside, likewise, by the end of Acts, so did water baptism. But remember, Israel had a close relationship with washings, washings, and Old Testament and baptisms, New Testament. Israel was promised by God that during the kingdom, she would be a kingdom of priests, holding the office of priest. That was prophesied. Notice the verse here. Exodus, Aaron, by the way, who's Aaron? Moses' brother. What was he the first? High priest. What was his sons? Priest. Okay? And Aaron and his sons, thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall wash or baptize them with water. And thou shalt gird them with girdles, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them. And the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. To the people of Israel then, Exodus 19, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. By the way, when's that going to happen? That's going to happen right here. Israel's not a holy nation, people. But she will be a holy nation one day in the future, won't she? Okay? Uh, Isaiah, but ye shall be named priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. And then Peter says, but ye, you Jews, you tribes that are scattered and everything, you Jews, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation. See how it fits them perfectly? Revelation 20, over there at the end. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. 
On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, that's the Messiah, and shall reign with him, the Messiah, Christ, a thousand years. Do you see that? Anybody getting this tonight, okay? A little bit, okay. See, since Israel as a nation is to be a nation of priests, every Jewish believer needed to be ceremonially washed or baptized. That's why John came, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. He was preparing them to become a kingdom of priests. Mark 16, he that believeth in his baptized shall be saved. You can't go into the kingdom unless you've been baptized. Have your sins ceremonially removed. Acts 2.38, Peter follows suit. Then Peter said unto them, the Jews there, repent and be baptized. Why is he saying that? He's trying to prepare them. He's offering them the kingdom. He's preparing them to become the kingdom of priests that God had promised the nation to become. Do you see that? For the Jew to be saved, he needed to believe Jesus was the Christ Messiah, the Son of God. Then repent, then be water baptized, then forgiveness of sin. That's not the way it happens with us. Then, after you're baptized with water, receive the Holy Spirit, and then follow the law. And why do people, somebody sent me something the other day, email or something, that said, uh, the Acts 2.38 is the most contrary old verse and always used in all of Christendom. And it's true. Now notice, these were expressions of true faith that were required. If you didn't do them, you were not saved. It showed you did not believe. But the grace gospel. At first, during the transition of Acts, Paul baptized a few. It was during the transition only. As more revelation of the mystery from Christ was given to Paul, as his tongues, vows, healings, circumcising, and miraculous signs went off the scene by the end of Acts, the transition from Israel to the body of Christ was completed, Paul stopped watering baptizing. Before he wrote his first book, Paul stopped baptizing. Christ has not sent me to baptize. Right? Uh, notice B. After further revelation about today's body of Christ came to Paul, he understood that baptism was not the same as it used to be. He did only what he needed to do at the beginning. For the sake of the Jews, to win some of the Jews, until he received further revelation. 1 Corinthians 1, 17, for Christ sent me not to baptize. Let me say something to you. The 12 could never say that because that was a part of their kingdom message. Ephesians 4, 5, for us today, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. What is that? 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. See that? Turn to the last page there. I'm going to finish this off real fast. 